Uh, hello everyone, welcome back. We've been talking recursion and we're going to jump straight into it with some more practice. Uh, let's see, today we're picking up where we left off. I gave you change xy as homework and given a string, compute recursively, no loops, a new string where all the lowercase x's have been changed to y's. This is what I gave you, right? Yeah. So we see our header, we have some string coming in and I need to ultimately return some string. And what we're going to be doing is kind of actually like concatenating this thing in pieces. So first off, base case. I'm going to check my string to see if it is a length of zero. We'll come back to this. Essentially, I'm going to consider a character and then I'm going to chop it off. I'm going to consider a character, chop it off. I keep doing that until we run out of characters. So ultimately what's going to stop the recursive call stack is that the string doesn't have any more characters. If this is the case, we can essentially return nothing or we can simply return str. They're effectively the same thing, right? If, they've, if I verify that there's nothing in the string, those are the same thing. Otherwise, we need to check the character to see if it is an X. If the current character is an X. Now, a couple of ways. You know we could use substring. We could use char app. I think char app's a little bit cleaner, so I'm going to ask, is the character, and you can also pick either end, right? We can ask, is the character at the front of the string at index zero, is that an X? Or I can check the character at the end of the string. It doesn't really matter in this case, I like to go with checking the one at the beginning just because it ends up looking a little bit cleaner. All right, we'll check the very first character. Because I'm looking at a char, I need to make a comparison using a equals relational operator, right? Char is a primitive data type. And I'm gonna ask, is this char equal to X exactly? Okay, if it is, I found an X and what I want to do is change it to a Y. Now we can't actually change strings. So what we're doing is like making a new string. What I will return in this case is a Y instead, right? I've identified that the first character is an X. I want to replace it with a Y instead of basically returning the current character. I'm going to return a Y instead along with and this is going to be our recursive call to keep our call stack going. Change X, Y. Now, I just considered the first character. That's the one I want to chop off. And by chop off, we don't, again, we can't edit strings. What we're actually doing is choosing to keep a section. So I will take my string to a substring beginning at index one, right? The first character is at index zero. So I will start this new substring at index one, going through the rest of the string. Okay. If I'm still here in the method, what it means is that the first character is just simply not an X, right? We still got characters because we're past this base case. The first character is not an X. I just want to return whatever's there, right? I just want to, this thing to keep going. So in this case, I've already considered the first character. I know it's not an X. I can just return it. Keep it like it is, but keep going. Ta-da. Okay, we'll come back to this base case, but basically I'm going to consider one character at a time. Once I've considered it, I'm gonna get rid of it. I'm gonna chop it off. Eventually, I don't have any more characters and that will ultimately stop us, right? This is ultimately what is stopping the recursive call stack. If the first character is an X, I want to replace it with a Y. So we're basically going to put a Y in its place and then keep going, getting rid of the first character. If I'm still in the method at this point, it means that the first character is something else. I wanna keep it but we want to keep going and I've considered the first character so we want to make it smaller. Now, uh, I did get a solution which employed an idea that I used yesterday. I want you to look at these two return statements. They're effectively the same, right? Like this part's the same, this part's the same. The only thing that's changing is this. 
So, uh, with that in mind, a tactic that you can use, I'm not saying that you have to, a tactic that you can use is bring in some type of variable. Let's create some type of char, uh, I'm gonna say ch. And maybe, just maybe, it's the first character. Right? Notice where I'm doing it. I am past this base case, which makes it A, efficient, but B, it ensures that at this point that I have at least one character to get. I'm going to see what that character is. It's actually interesting, since I actually have it saved in this variable, I could clean this up a little bit and do that. However, instead of returning this, what I'm going to simply do is update ch. Right? If ch is uh, actually an x, I'm going to change it to a y. What this allows me to do is kind of reduce what was duplicate code. What I have highlighted was effectively uh, appearing twice. And so down here, I can simply just say ch. Okay. Uh, any thoughts on this? All right, I believe we can shave off an iteration. No, no, this is clean. Okay, the variable, obviously we don't have to use it. Yeah, we could do like some situation if there's only one character left, but I still need to know if it's an X. So I don't necessarily know if it's worth it. Sweet. Open up IntelliJ. Um, so we just did this coding bat, right, from yesterday. Actually, let's do change by. That's the next one. We'll do the code. We'll do the uh, IntelliJ in just a moment. There's only so many uh, string recursion problems left in coding bad. I kind of want to knock them all out. Given a string, compute recursively, no loops, a new string where all appearances of pi have been replaced with 3.14. We're going to just kind of zoom right through this one because it's very similar to what we just did, except what I'm looking for is not just one character, it's multiple characters. So that means we're going to have to either use substring or two calls to char app. So we're going to consider basically two characters and then we'll chop those two characters off. So eventually my string is going to run out of characters. So if our string length is zero, we're going to return nothing. Right? Notice in this case that we are ultimately making a string. I could also return str. If I'm still a method, it means I got some characters. I need to check them. Again, we can check either end. I recommend looking at the beginning. And because we need effectively two characters, I'm going to use substring. Let's do a substring from 0, 2. That's going to get me the first two characters from str as a string. I want to know, do these two characters equal exactly pi? Notice this is different from the problem that we just did because I'm now working with a string, an object, instead of a primitive data type such as char. So I'm gonna take this string and ask, does this string equal pi? Notice the double quotes as well, right? I'm, I wanna compare string to string using an equals method because they are objects. If this is true, what I'm returning is gonna be a 3.14, right? We're replacing that along with we only keep going now I've considered the first two characters I want to get rid of those first two characters so we'll do a substring of str beginning at index 2 there's gonna be some problems here we'll get to those but if I'm still in the method at this point what it means is there are characters those first two characters are not pi I kind of just want I just want to keep going. Like I want to keep what's there and keep going. So we can return basically just the current character along with our call to change pi. Again, making it a little bit smaller. I just consider the first character, right? I'm returning the first character as it is, making no changes. But my string needs to get smaller, so I want to chop that off in subsequent calls. Now, we're going to have problems, but they're not stack overflow problems. This isn't recursion issues. We're getting index out of bounds on our string. Help me out. What's going on? Why? 
And it works for some things. If there's nothing there, ooh, with this one it was just pie pie. We're chopping off two characters. Yeah, okay. Right, what if I just I don't have like two characters, right? So with this very first call, we have X, okay, that's one character. This pi gets replaced, and then we're down to just X, meaning that that last recursive call has exactly one character. Well, is the string length, with the string has a length of one, is the length zero? No. I then try to chop off two characters or work with two characters, and that's not, that's not gonna work. We can actually cut this down, right? If I have only one character left, well, there's no way it could be pi. So that's just the end of it. I should just be able to stop there. Cool. Now open IntelliJ. So what we're kind of doing in IntelliJ is looking at some recursive methods that are like useful. The stuff that we're doing in CodingBat, it's really good for kind of getting your bearings, understanding what's going on but you don't necessarily see the usefulness of it. Now, recursion, useful, recursion is an alternative to iteration. I'd argue that we don't need it. Uh, I'd also argue that we probably should have it. <laughs> We're going to see in a future lecture of just like the quintessential example of why recursion should exist. Uh, that being said, we're going to look at some methods like reverse, right? Reversing a string, that's, pretty useful, right? It's, it's something that you could, um, you could actually take and use somewhere else. So we're going to actually code this in IntelliJ. So we see our method here. The class doesn't really matter that much. I just need basically a place to put it. Uh, we're not really working with objects here. We're just going to put a, we're going to do a bunch of static methods. Notice this is underlined indicating that it's static, but this method reverse is going to take in a string, ultimately return a string, and the string that it is spitting back out is the same string, but in reverse order. Sweet. All right, let's go. How's everyone doing today? I'm creating a new project here. Um, our SDK is already selected for us. I'm on version 11, doesn't matter. We're gonna go next, next, as long as you're above version 1.8. Um, I'm calling this one recursion. When, when, Windows, Windows Plus. Ooh, ah. I don't know if that actually worked for y'all. Okay. Let's go. I'm going to expand my project folder. Let's right click on the SRC, make a new Java class. Uh, it doesn't really matter. I'm calling it recursion. Calling it recursion. Mm, this is pretty. Let's go ahead and throw in our main method. I'm going to use our short key of PSVM. We'll come back to that. I'm now going to take this method header or this method signature translated into a method header. We got public, static, string, reverse, and reverse is gonna take in a string. I'm calling that str. Okay, I'd consider Java docking this. Right. Reverse, this method is ultimately going to return str in reverse order. I kind of think that's self-explanatory, but maybe consider um, you know writing down some examples here. If we were to call reverse, passing in passing in cheese, that is going to ultimately return e s e e h c. Okay, so let's think about this. Much like our coding bats, I can basically only consider like one character at a time. 
right? The, the way that we're going to ultimately do this recursively, consider one character at a time. Once we've considered it, chop it off, get rid of it. Now, there's a couple of approaches here with reverse. We can go from either end, for instance. I can effectively take the first character and put it at the end of everything else. And then we kind of do that over and over and over again. We kind of repeat that process, right? If I take the first character, right, this case is an H, I'm going to then put it at the end. Now, I'm typing it out here, kind of what seems to be in backwards, we could be going backwards because let's put it at the end. But this is a product of us doing the last in, first out type of situation. We're going to see that. We'll end up uh, tracing this and we'll see how this ends up working. Um, it's pretty clever. Now, this is the approach where we take the first character, stick it at the end. That's the one that we're going to go with. Of note, you could go the other way, right? We could take the last character, this final E, and actually put it in front of everything else and then repeat that process. We take the last character and put it in front of everything else. Okay, so these are just approaches. I recommend this one. Just like with our coding bats, we can end up using char app. It ends up being a little bit cleaner. It makes this, the calls to substring cleaner, that sort of thing. Maybe I'll just leave those. So, what's my base case? If we consider the first character and chop it off, when do we stop? when there's only one character. Sweet, we could in theory stop when there's no characters. I like the response of stopping when there's one character because what that is going to do is shave off a method call on the recursive stack. So if the length of str is less than or equal to one, okay, because we're only considering one character at a time, in theory we could just do equals to, but I like this, it's a little bit cleaner. If there's only one character left, we could just return what's here. Otherwise, we want to keep going. We want to return reverse. Right? I said that we want to kind of take this approach where we basically have everything else that's going to be this call to reverse, followed by the first character. Now, I did get the question in chat. Isn't the difference between these two just changing the order in the return statement? It is. All right, we'll take a look at that. So we're going to reverse. Um, let's kind of skip back here to our, our letter, right? Because we're going to basically return the first letter after everything else. So here's my call to reverse. I've considered the first character at this point. I need to chop off the first character. And the way we do that is with substring beginning at index one. We'll start at index one, go through the rest of the string. I kind of think this is it. So let's hop up here. We're going to south and we need to call this thing. I'm going to reverse and let's use our example of cheese. You can go and give me some other suggestions and uh, in chat. Interesting. Um, yep. Yeah. So there it is in reverse. So we did this scenario. I got the question of kind of working with this down here. Isn't this approach just kind of flipping this? Well, if I was to just flip this, I'm just going to get the exact same car or the exact same car, the exact same uh, string um, that I had before. Sorry. It, it's inevitable that everyone says, race car here because it's a palindrome and it's the same forwards as backwards and it's actually very funny I kind of did this on purpose but our next method we're going to write is determining if a string is a palindrome so anyway to uh, honor my fans we'll do a jigglypuff
Okay. Now, sorry, back to this question. I had the idea that this approach and this approach is just simple as flipping these things. But if I were to flip these, right, and we take Jigglypuff and run it through the reverse method, I'm just getting the exact same string back, right? It's, it's keep this character and then do this. What, in order to kind of do this approach, what I need is effectively the last character. And then we keep going, right? I just considered the last character, so I want to keep everything but the last character. So we're going to do a substring beginning at index zero, going up through the string minus one. So this called a substring will allow me to keep everything beginning at index zero up to the last character. And there's our Jigglypuff in reverse. So um, hopefully you see, this is kind of a monstrosity, right? It's this approach. We take basically the last character and then continue on with everything else. But we're accomplishing ultimately the same task and this just looks nowhere near as clean. This is why I'm suggesting that when we're doing these things, it's in where we can go from either end. It's much better to start at the beginning because we end up with a cleaner solution. And I'm gonna jump back to said solution. Sweet. Okay, so here is the reverse method that we wrote. Our next one is palindrome, right? We have a method, it's gonna go in the exact same class. The name of the method is palindrome. We're gonna take in a string and we're gonna return true or false it is a palindrome or not. It's underlined indicating that it's static. Write a method is palindrome that returns true if the given string is a palindrome, false otherwise. Is a palindrome. Palindrome is not a proper noun. And that's now special, false otherwise. Okay, so mm, some of you, what's a palindrome? A palindrome is a word, number, phrase, or other sequence of, or, of characters, characters which reads the same backwards, backward as forward. Thank you, Wikipedia. So, madam, right? M-A-D-A-M, M-A-D-A-M, race car, palindrome, R-A-C-E-C-A-R, R-A-C-E-C-A-R. Sweet. Those are examples of palindromes. So, let's do that. Yes, we could just compare the uh, the reversed versions. What is the suggestion that I'm seeing in chat? Well, if I want to know if Jigglypuff is a palindrome, let's not do Jigglypuff. I want to know if race car is a palindrome. Race car. Uh, I just need to know, does it equal race car in reverse? Right? This will take race car and ask, is it equal to the exact same string in reverse? Yeah. Okay, listen. That's not the point. We're practicing recursion. So I got public static boolean is palindrome. Uh, case sensitivity. I'm just not very worried about case sensitivity. You could take that into account. Um, I would honestly handle it in this case with a with a precondition. Let's look at that in just a moment. So we're going to take in a string, just calling that str, and this method will return true if str is the same forward as it is backward. Turns true if str reads reads. Reads the same forward as it does, as it does, something like that. So we're going to take in a string, right? Let's think about this. What we want to do is effectively look at the characters on either end, right? Uh, so let's throw in an example here. 
So race car, for some reason, I find it very interesting that that is everyone's go-to. Race car is a palindrome. What we're effectively going to do is look at these two characters. If they're the same, we get to keep going. If they're not, we would stop. What do I mean by keep going? Well, we're going to basically, once we consider these two R's, we want to chop them off so that we're then working with just that subsection. I would then want to know, are these two characters are the same? If they are, we'll chop them off and we'll keep going. Right? I would then want to know, are these two characters the same? If they are, we will chop them off and keep going. And right away, I hope you recognize our base case. What's our base case? If str.length is less than or equal to 1, what we have is a palindrome. We can stop there because there's only one character left. We're going to return true. Now, next I think it just is. And next is our false case. How do we know we don't have a palindrome? Well, that's if we look at the first character, look at the last character, and they're not the same. Right? If we bring some cheese back into it, cheese would give us false just right away. Right? We would ask, is C equal to E? It's not. So I want to get the first character. That's at index 0. And I want to know, do, is that not equal to the last character? The last character being at... Oh. I don't know what that is. We're just going to throw that to the side. I have no idea what I pressed. Um, if Is the first character equal to the last character? And that is at length minus 1. If the first character does not equal the last character, then we can stop there. We don't have a palindrome, right? Cheese right away is not a palindrome. If it's this string, cheese C, right, I would ask, are these two the same? And we chop those off and keep going. So now I'm at that part where I want to get rid of the two characters. I have considered two characters at this point, the first character and the last character. I want to get rid of those things. We're going to call is palindrome, and we're going to take our string, get rid of those two characters, and the way we're going to do that is using a substring, beginning at index one, up to the last character. Let's try it out. I meant to trace this one, by the way, so we'll do some tracing on our reverse in is palindrome. So, is race car a palindrome? Don't you want to chop off both ends? I think it maybe went a little bit too fast, right? We have our, our substring. I am chopping off both ends, right? I'm beginning at index one and going up to the last character. This is inclusive, exclusive. All right, race car, that's a palindrome. Is Jigglypuff? Not so much. Let's trace. Uh, we'll do our is palindrome because it's fresh. Okay, so I'm going to ask, is palindrome, let's just use P here to denote that, and you want taco cat. I'm a man of the people, we'll throw in taco cat. Okay, what we're going to ask is, is our string length less than or equal to one? It's not. Is the first character, T, not equal to the last character, T? Those are both the same, so this is false. We'll skip over that. We put a recursive call into the stack, palindrome, <laughs> passing in uh, a substring of str beginning at index one up to the last index. So our string at this point is that. 
Maybe it's easier for me to copy, paste, and delete. Let's step inside this call. We would ask, is our string length less than or equal to one? That's false. Is the first character, A, not equal to the last character, A? That's false. We'll skip over that. We'll come down to our recursive call where we say, is palindrome getting rid of the first character and the last character. We want to step inside this recursive call. We would ask, is our string length less than or equal to one? That's false. Is the first character C not equal to the last character C? That's false. We'll come down here to our recursive call where we have P passing in just the single character, right? I get rid of the first character. I get rid of the last character. We'll step inside this recursive call and ask, is our string length less than or equal to one? That's true. So this will return true all the way up to the chain. Um, I'm happy with that. I do want to go through a recursive call stack here, right? I do want to trace our reverse method. The main reason being is this doesn't seem that intuitive, I don't think. So, Let's reverse, mm, not taco cat, because that would be a little odd. Let's reverse cheese. Okay, I'm going to step inside of this method call. We'll ask, is our string length less than or equal to one? That's false. We come down, we have reverse. We're gonna do a substring of cheese, All right? Beginning at index one, that's this index going through the rest of the string. That's H-E-E-S-E. -E -E. We're then going to tack on the first character. That's just a C. <laughs> Y'all trying to figure out my icons. Okay, so let's step inside this recursive call. I'm gonna ask, is our string length less than or equal to one? It's not. So we're going to hit our reverse, where we're going to reverse str.substring1, right, reverse. We'll take a substring of this, beginning at index one, going through the rest of the string, that's E-E-S-E, -E -S -E, plus H. Okay, let's we'll step inside this call. Is our string length less than or equal to one? Nope, we're going to reverse, doing a substring of E-S-E, -S -E plus the E. We'll step inside this call. Our string length is not less than or equal to one. Oh, uh, sorry, E. I'm gonna finish this out. Notice I'm alternating between strings and chars. It's not a big deal. Ultimately, we're gonna be concatenating with a string. We'll step inside this recursive call. We would ask, is our string length less than or equal to one? It is, so this is just gonna return E as a string. Okay, now let's collapse this recursive call stack. This is the height of my call stack. The last thing that I added is gonna be the first thing to actually execute, to actually finish. So I'm going to, I know what this evaluates to. This evaluates to just simply E. Okay, I can now solve this one. I know what it evaluates to. It's E plus S, right? So here's what I'm talking about. This is a string. We're gonna concatenate it with a char. In theory, those are two different data types and you can't add them together, but Java is gonna handle the conversion for us and basically produce a string. So what we're gonna get out of this is a string E S. I can now solve this one. We're gonna take E S, concatenate it with E. can solve this one. We'll take ESE and concatenate it with E. Can figure out this one. We'll take this and concatenate with H. And then lastly, we can concatenate these. Man, I hope that's right. Did we do cheese in reverse? Wheat. Okay, so I don't think this is naturally intuitive, 
right? This is the approach we went with, but the only reason why it actually ends up working is that recursive call stack. Effectively, the last thing that gets added is the first to actually be processed, and so we end up doing it kind of in reverse. Okay, um, so these are some examples of some recursive methods, right? Is palindrome, that's pretty useful. Reverse, that can be pretty useful. I wanted to kind of show you some of that. We'll do some more stuff in IntelliJ in the coming days. I'm going to leave you with a coding bat. There's only one string coding bat left to my knowledge, and it has no X. I want you to do this one. Give me your solutions. DM them to me in a coding bat, and I'll see you soon. Let's chill.